sound the alarm. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't just me that heard that. Yeah, I heard that too. But uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, um, we are. While this will not be posted on the exact same date, uh, we are recording this in honor of this year's uh, Lunar New Year's. Chinese New Year's. And while I will say no, we weren't intending on Oni Plays playing this game too. We're just doing this because. I heard about this game via the video game archives on Tumblr and Twitter, and uh, let's oh. just say that it's a special little yeah. Uh, from the from the weird minds of DreamWorks Interactive, we have Typhu: Wrath of the Tiger for the PS One. So I'll throw this out there right now, and say that my only experience with DreamWorks Interactive was the fact that they helped publish The Neverhood, Neverhood. and I I thought that was kind of where they stopped. So this is a a wonderful eye-opening experience for me to see uh, another uh, another game that they, I guess, this was like all in-house they uh, developed this new IP. This one, I believe, was made in-house because I know Activision were involved with the uh, publishing for this one. And as we go through the game, you might definitely recognize a few nooks and charms of its era being the, the late 90s, like how okay. weird all the character designs look and the voices that they speak. Oh, oh. Texture work is pretty nice, though. Make one heck of a nice rug. Hi, Jeff. Stop. This temple is sacred. You cannot just enter and defile it at your will. Moping. Dragon says, "Bitch, please." And have you looked at me? Do I look like I am to be dealing with any sort of kung fu panda on my premises? Oh, Ouch. <laughs> I love how that was the equivalent of him just backhanding him and <gasps> it seems I've been misinformed. You are less than nothing. How could you be Ouch. less than nothing when nothing is literally nothing? Ouch. Oh, damn. Just straight up just Pathetic. That ends that. Finish up, gods. With pleasure. Wow, what an introductory boss battle this was. So yeah, that bastard right there is the head of the Dragon Clan, and he is trying to seek out the last of the Tiger Clan. And uh, that being us, Typhu, voiced by lovable old uh, Thunder himself. Yeah, yeah, I just heard that. That's freaking like. Hang on, let's listen to it again. Thunder, uh, John DiMaggio. Yeah, John DiMaggio. Hang on, I'm gonna wait to him to talk. Don't wanna. Oh, who's this panda dude? Look what time spent caring for me has brought you in the temple. All necessary <laughs> sacrifices. Yeah. Stop dwelling on that. All I know about the panda is that he is part of the panda clan. If you stay, okay. I mean, they will be back. so far I'm down. Visit the I want to see. So, uh, edge of the we'll see uh, how this goes on now that we've gotten our grandiose quest. Because I'm assuming even though we're all surviving, I will do as you for say. now we need to take down that dragon dude. Die. Pretty much, and figure out exactly the full tr fruits of our of our um, lost heritage. Why that not? being of the long lost Tiger Clan, having been more or less decimated in the war between them, the dragons, and so on and so forth. So here we it's go. Kind of one of those one of those weird weird stories that doesn't really explain itself all that well in game. Like it's mostly stuff you would read from the manual or what have you, but. Uh, Typhu, Wrath of the Tiger, pretty much your traditional 3D platformer where you play as a tiger. Who knows Kung Fu? Oh, jeez. Okay, so there's a Kung Fu meter, I assume, at the top. Well, okay, so what the meter on top is, um, on the right is our health, and the and on our left is our chi meter, which will not extend... Well, for now, it's not, it doesn't mean much of anything, considering we don't exactly know any really hardcore chi moves at the moment. Right, Or at least the one that I'm aware of at the moment. Yeah, nothing I will say, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't beaten the whole thing myself. I've gotten as far as beating the the area where all the leopard, where the leopard clan resides. And uh -huh. from that, I was able to unlock this interesting little spring nuke and uh, it's extended mobility from the leopards. Gotcha. Okay, so we're so our whole mission is to go across the realms and uh, oh, <laughs> go across the realms, learn a whole bunch of kung fu styles or, or just fighting styles in general, and also again learn the tr learn more about our lost heritage because again, Tai Fu is literally the only tiger that remains. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, uh, hype. What are you thinking of this so far? I mean, we've got some voice actors you recognize. Well, yeah, Dad, sorry if I've been a little bit silent. I, I've been looking up the BTVA page for this, and yeah, you guys oh, are gotcha. right that, that, I was about to say, you guys are right, that tiger is a John, and the, the, the Poe knockoff we just saw, I think James might get a kick out of this, is the original actor for Dingo Dial from Crash 3. I mean, 
that's I mean, damn, talk about a smooth one eighty between voices because like they they sound nothing alike. Yeah, he's very he's very he's very calm. See, see, that's all you needed. All he needed was all that. See what happens when you give a guy all the toast he ever wants. And also, real talk, real quick, uh, special kudos to Typhoon's uh, haters gonna hate jive right here. <laughs> Look at him right, just going about. That 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 is, that is the that is the full intimidation pose of boy. Don't you make me come over there? I swear. Oh jeez. Okay, Things so I did wrong. Things Po did wrong. Come over here, you So, okay, so right off the bat, then I say, uh, for a game all about kung fu, uh, how does the combat feel in this game, James? A little too simplistic for its own sake. I will definitely say that right here and right now. Like, this is by no means a super, um, um, deep, Combo. like, complex, like, brawler, because this is pretty much what the game acts trying to act like. It's pretty much a 3D platformer slash beat em up. And the beat em up is about as simple as you, as, say, I would honestly say about the same, if not a little. Less so than, like, Final Fighter Streets of Rage. Right. So just mash the square button and the triangle button for heavy attacks? Pretty much. Like, basically, when you come across across one of the one of these uh, snake boots with the with the slightly sm small arms, you yes. literally just constantly press the square button to beat them up. And then, once you're literally flung into the air automatically, you'll be given a triangle prompt that gives you that, sh that shockwave attack, which is pretty devastating, all things considered. Yeah, I was yeah. say, holy crap, that, that, like, it stuns them and deals a good amount of damage, and... I I'm hoping that it'll... Not to say that it has, not to say that the combat has been looking uninteresting, but I'm hoping it'll look a little more interesting if they start pitting us against more than one enemy at a time. Also, something worth noting, real quick. Notice all, notice how detailed the grass here looks, and whenever we step on it, yeah, the leaves. Yeah. But then we step on this other patch of grass, and it's literally nothing. Is there gonna be like stealth mechanics later where we need to not step on the tall grass? You don't have to per se, but basically, um, you don't want to wake these guys up, do you? I mean... Well, I do. Get him! Wow. Good morning! Take it. Oh, I see. In the lower left, that's just like an enemy count. Oh, uh, basically what I just did right there, if you press the R2 button, uh, Typhoon could do a little taunt like this. Or you could hold it down and just be Oh, and that, and that allows you to charge Chi. Uh, I don't think it charges Chi, per se. I think that's mostly just a... Maybe? I could, I don't know. Like, I, I'll, I'll look up a manual later. But uh, oh, you had to defeat two more. Oh, I see. Fans. Now you're, now it is just like you said, beat 'em up section. Now we are forced into mortal combat. Again, though, they're only giving, they're only throwing like one of these guys at you at a time. So I think we're, I think we're in good, uh, good standing to be progressing forward on our grand adventure. Um, don't get too comfy, comfy about that though, because there will be certain instances where they will throw more boots at you. And I will also say as a quick shout out to this game's interesting art style. Yeah, I'm gonna look at, I, I'm gonna look more into like who are the people who made this art because yeah, because so it's like I know that I that was something. Is... What's Go ahead. Hey, you first, you first. I'm, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at the signature to figure out if I can recognize it. Go ahead. Okay, because I was about to say that was something that like James was showing us off like beforehand. He was showing us like some of the concept art for the game. And it's like. You know, kind of a staple of like how like sometimes PS2 can't do concept art. All, not PS2, PS1. PS1. I'm an idiot. How PS1 can't do concept art a whole lot of justice, but like seeing the concept art for this is really interesting because I, on paper, I really like a lot of these designs. They look really, you know, stylized. You know, very fitting for like you know actions, action stories and whatnot. I, right. I, I, I the, the the one artist whose name I've seen the most like consistently is a Dan Panosian. I'm gonna look him up here. Alrighty. Though I guess if there's one thing that's worth worth saying about, about the art style is that it is very deliciously '90s with a small hint of um with a small hint of furry paradise. Yeah, which that alone makes me now wonder like how I wonder if any at all if they referenced any of the concept art or any like concepts from this IP for Kung Fu Panda. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, like, uh, assuming that they were, like, willing to reach that far back. All right, I mean, so it would be an interesting coincidence, despite the fact that, yeah, Kung Fu Panda itself is literally a DreamWorks movie. Yeah. Okay, so, um, what I'm pulling up here is Dan Panosian. He has done actually a lot of art. He actually did a lot of art for the Marvel comics. Things Any like particular? Thor, it, it, it doesn't reference... It, Unfortunately, this Wikipedia page does not, like, link specific issues, but it says that he has done art for the like of Thor, X-Men, Captain America, Web of Spider-Man, Wolverine, Wonder Man, Incredible Hulk. He's done a lot, so he gets around. 
That's dope. Uh, he won a Best of Show Addy Award for a DSL ad campaign, Jack Flash. Uh, hmm. Let's see. He did a couple image comics for something called Arkham Knight. Or maybe it was um, just for the character Arkham Knight. Uh, I'm trying to think. It can't be the same Arkham Knight I'm thinking of because he said image comics. Oh, hey. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Uh, as James continues for it, which by the way, I'm all right if I do this, right? Yeah, uh, I just want to be sure we weren't getting up to anything important. Uh, this Wikipedia article very, uh, co very, co very conveniently ignores the name of this game, and in one of the paragraphs it says he was the lead designer on a DreamWorks video game about animals that embody the spirit of kung fu. Not credited. It, not, the, the name of the game is not mentioned at all here. Aww. The game caught the attention of Steven Spielberg and became oh. the springboard for the blockbuster movie Kung Fu Panda. Well, what do you know? Huh. Shortly after Dan was doing the lead design work for another game, Duke Nukem, like the original Duke Nukem. Boy, oh, that's an interesting um, shift, in per shift in perspective. And uh, the only other one uh, that I can notice here that, that Hype may find interesting is that in the film Logan, <clears throat> uh, because uh, Marvel did not allow actual comic book issues to appear in the movie uh, for copyright or licensing reasons, uh, he did all the designs... He made fake comic book covers whenever they were shown in that movie. That's neat. But yeah, uh, I yeah, think I remember because okay. I remember that being a thing in Logan, where apparently by that point in the feature, like the tales of the X Men, were basically like told through books and whatnot, and including comic books. Yeah, so he did the fake designs for those, and uh, and yeah, wow, look at that. So there you go. Like at least if so long as this uh, citation needed paragraph of uh, Wikipedia is to be believed, no more theorizing. This game was like the like inspiration for Kung Fu Panda, or at least it's what got the conversation rolling as to how they could like make a world like this interesting. Honestly, it's really funny thinking back on DreamWorks as a whole, considering the fact that prior, like, we all know them for all their movies and whatnot, but apparently, like, even beforehand, they were more so known for crafting out a few games here and there. Like, again, The Neverhood, Skull Monkeys, and this. I'm looking up any other games they've done to see if there's any that I've seen in. Uh, what's the gold coin? That's pretty much your pretty much your level completion uh, marker, like a gold like a like a gold ring in or a gold ring in Sonic Adventure. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. So the other thing I can see here is that. Currently, uh, the the whatever, whatever team was around for DreamWorks Interactive, they currently are working under the name Danger Close Games. Are they still around? Uh, let's see. Um, doesn't look like it because the last game they made was Medal of Honor back in 2012. Oh well, but, uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's a sour note to uh, leave on. Yes, yeah, so let's see what other games they did. They did Go oh, they did Goosebumps Escape from Horror. Oh, that's right, Escape from Horrorland was the freaking. Uh, it was a point and click adventure game where they got like, they they put a. But I'm I'm wondering if I should do something for that game. But it's it's very FMV centric. But it's like they put a butt ton of game of like acting potential in that they got frick they got. Uh, they had Steven Spielberg actually directing and like creating these elaborate sets that you would move through. I want to say they got freaking oh god, what's his face? The guy from Jurassic Park, like the like the lead dude who said that life finds a way and all that. Why am I forgetting his name? Um, I know, I know, it's not Jeff Goldblum. No, it was. That was him. Oh, never mind. That yeah, they got Jeff Goldblum in that game. Uh, they did another game called Steven Spielberg Circuit Chair. They did Chaos Island. Uh, Oh yeah, quick mention. To, also, oh, another special mention to this game's banger soundtrack. I dig it. I'll look, I'm gonna look that up as well. I want to see that now. And then, yeah, uh, Typhoon Wrath of the Tiger. This was actually made in the last year uh, before. Well, what would happen is just a little bit later this year they would make Medal of Honor, and that would just I, for all this time I had no idea that, that Medal of Honor was started by DreamWorks. That's, I mean, I, yeah, like, no, Medal of Honor, from what I remember hearing, had a lot of, uh, had a lot of, um, big main talent on board for it. Beyond that, uh, afterwards, this team was acquired by EA, because, oh my goodness, new cool shoot game, please work for us, so, in addition to, like, seven more Medal of Honor games, they made Clive Barker's Undying, uh, Boom Blocks. That sounds familiar. And, oh, yeah, Boom uh, Blocks, it was like a, wasn't that like a, uh, not a puzzle game, but it's like a game on the Wii where you basically... It's, it's like a kind of game. like... Yeah, a physics game. Basically think Flappy Birds, but not Flappy Birds. Think Angry Birds, but in 3D and no birds. Right, like you're just throwing bombs to try and topple a tower as best you can. And beyond that, they also made other games for Conquer, but, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, 
So they so they did make a number of games that do look interesting to like to take a look at here. But for now, I'll go back to Typhoon and see if I can learn anything else about this. Um, for this game, uh, oh, whoa, I'm invisible. what the hey? He's invisible. Uh, for this game, uh, a man named George Chang was the lead artist with Ryan Vernon providing character designs. Um, Michael Gyak... I I'm going to butcher this name. Michael Giacchino ja was the composer and he... And, and this oh, he's actually, the, I was about to say, if, it, if it's the same person I'm thinking of, he's the guy that like does the compositions for like all the current Spider-Man films, isn't he? Uh, really? I believe so. Let me go to his discography. Um, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, he did the music for Spider-Man No Way Home. He's doing the music for Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, go ahead, James. God damn. Oh, uh, never mind. Uh, he, he also did, he also did some music work for things like Mission Impossible, Incredibles, Pixar. He's done Pixar movies. He's done, mm -hmm. he's done a lot. Holy crap. And I thought, and, and I thought the success story, story behind the guy that composed the cult, the Maui Mallard and Cold Shadow soundtrack was impressive. Dude, he and did the critically acclaimed Walt Disney movie Sky High. I thought it was up. I thought it was up that he composed. No, he also did up as well, but it was, I was just making a joke. But yes, he also did. <laughs> yes, he also did up, and and uh, uh, he, and he did actually a lot of video games this time. Oh, oh wait, he did. He apparently, according to this, he did help with Maui Mallard. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. He helped. He helped <laughs> out. He, he helped uh, Steve Duck. Okay, so Steve Duck worked at the SNES version, and Michael Gick, Michael Giacchino and Patrick J. Collins did the. Holy crap! I'm learning a lot. This have we even talked about? Have we even talked about Chinese you, Tai New Year? Have we even talked about Chinese New Year once in this video beyond the intro? Not uh, really. No. Well, so if, we start. Be... Yeah, that, that's why we're doing this because it's the year of the tiger. Happy every day. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And again, I'll still stress. It's honestly kind of paradoxical, yet not entirely entirely surprising that we're also doing this. Right as we learn that, oh look, Odie Plays is doing it too. I, I guess they, I, I, like you said, Great Minds Think Alike, and this is like, I mean, again, there's a lot to be, be enjoyed about this. Uh, this doesn't look also, like a bad real game. Also, quick, I love how as big and brutish as some of these snake fighters are, the way they sound whenever they're being punched at is like, oh, what the, oh, oh, oh geez. Okay, as they're being punched at. Yeah, I heard this. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, no, it, it sounds so pathetic. Oh. But yeah, it's like. But yeah, I was I, I, the freaking teleport. Go ahead. Yeah, it's like, I guess I can't really blame them for, like, wanting to pick this, because it's like, when you really think about it, like, are there really, like, a whole lot of games out there that actually have a tiger as the main character? Uh, there's Ty. There's Ty, but. Like, I mean, like, a traditional tiger. Uh, let me look that up, actually. Video. Can you. Tiger I mean, we we almost had something with Pro Eight with um, Diddy Kong Racing if um, they stuck to their their guns. Yeah, yeah. That, that would have been um, Timber the Tigers in game. I know there is. Um... You didn't grab the gold coin. I know. Well, hey, who's going to get this guy first? Probably going to use the sooner, but eh, I, it would have bothered me if I didn't collect it. Yeah, no, the only yeah, the, no, the only other tiger I can think of is the freaking tiger from Connectables. <laughs> like the Jesus. like the little baby tiger. Yeah, no, we actually don't have any like like major tiger protagonists. They're all always like either relegated to a side character or tie the Tasmanian tiger, which is legally like Extinct. argue yeah, and arguably like not a tiger but another creature entirely. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I I think we just went with the best there was. Uh, do we get a boss battle soon? I do believe the next level we'll be going to is where we'll have our first boss. Okay, I feel like that'd be a good enough spot as any. And and if it's not me, it's by the percentages. The game's not that long at all. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, yeah, yeah we're already nearing the quarter way point. But, eh, they were experimenting and clearly, whatever, clearly... Oh, just in time, actually. We are heading to our uh, big, big... Finally, game. awesome. Not only our first boss, but also where the plot actually progresses. Okay. Yeah, we yeah I know. Yeah, clearly, you know, this... This experiment paid off for that for, for that studio in the long run, because I mean, yeah, even though even though as far as I'm aware, the game was not very not that huge of a success, both critically and uh, commercially. Damn. Now that is something though that would be really interesting is that if is if if somewhere in Kung Fu Panda you could see, uh, like a Taifu like Easter egg summit that would be neat. But I don't. I, yeah, I, that I, would I be cute. No, like honestly, no I can see the two it. worlds crossing over fairly easily. Yeah, I mean... So, down there is where we will be facing our first boss, Crusher. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, this guy from the concert. Okay. He's the head of the Snake Clan, oh, as far as I'm aware. 
Ah! And he's got himself a big whacking stick. But here's, oh boy. here's pretty much my here's my strategy to literally beat this guy. Jump, and then combo him. Then move out of the way. Oh, Rit, blab the rinse repeat. I just had a deja vu moment. Oops. Oh crap. It's one of those things where like, holy crap, like you've been there before, like you feel like you've done the exact same thing, and I I I I've never, never seen this game in my life, but now I'm recognizing this exact fight that James is doing. Really? Well, but this I is have, the exact same strategy. I have the gift. No, but James no, but James is actually holding out his own pretty well. Uh, how how lenient or how uh, difficult would you say this game is? Uh, it can range from, from from pretty standard to pretty tricky, especially with some of the bosses. But this guy, yeah, There's you no you good. say it like it is, John. <laughs> but um, what was I gonna say? Um. Uh, just like in terms of like in terms of like how difficult the game is like uh, like are checkpoints frequent enough are is checkpoints it... are semi frequent but I could I feel like they could splice a few more here and there. Okay. Now then we're here in the root tiger root tiger oh, mountains boy. and oh hey a mantis master. Most impressive young tiger, the crusher python was a formidable opponent, but your skills, though rough, serve you well. Who are you? You may call me Master Typhoon. You know my name? Do you know what this place is? The abandoned Tiger Temple ruins. Fallen, but not abandoned. Long ago, a great battle was waged here during the last days of the siege. Blood of the noble White Tiger Clan stains these very stones. And now, I can sort of see it. they're all gone? Long gone. But their spirits are all around you. Each of us has an inner spirit, an energy, fed by the world around us. It is called Chi. Witness time. Ouch. Oh, boy. Nasty move. Oh, crap. That was not supposed to happen. Are you all right? I've added <laughs> to the top of your screen. I thought I was still in hologram mode. Chi does. Summon your energy, make it your so now we get to finally start learning some of our focus. new moves. Yep, oh, and this is our first one. Fire. But yeah, I, it's one of those things where looking at the concept art. Cool. Well done. I, it would be There's cool if it would be one of those. Uh, sorry. Um, it's one of those things where looking at the concept art to this, I do almost wonder if maybe this was like, if this game came out like a generation or two too early Inside for like, for for. The engine and the an models to really reflect. Like, master. if you took that kind of concept art nowadays, I'm pretty sure, like, with that kind of art direction, you could really make something look really cool with today's Leopard like hardware and stuff. Well, they'll never guess who's coming oh. to dinner. Hmm. Hmm. So, so with that, what's up, Mike? I, things, I, I things just Tiger did wrong. Things Mantis <laughs> did wrong. I'm just sorry. I was just about to say. Speaking of Mantis, something that I want to say that Logan might get a kick out of. So I doubled back to the BTVA page while we were talking to Mantis. And I'm not going to say the character's name because I feel like I'm going to mispronounce it, but the guy voicing Mantis is Mulan's papa. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Uh, uh, I know at the very, I mean, at the very least, we can say that his last name is Fa. That's right. all I know. But, uh, that, but yeah, okay, like from the original, okay. No, no, uh, no, okay, you know, now that I hear it, uh, now that I'm picturing that in my, in my mind's ear, I can definitely, <laughs> uh, like, hear that. Oh, uh, and I love you can actually bounce, <laughs> on, the, bounce on the boss if you nice. get this going race. <laughs> Do you mind? Dishonor on him, Sorry. dishonor on his cow, and holy crap, oh my god, I didn't even, I just now noticed that, yeah, now that we've been given actual plot relevance to our chi meter, they just, like, crank that sucker up. Yep, because now we have access to our, uh, our chi, for, which for now only fuels our quote-unquote screen nuke. Okay, um, so how do we do the screen nuke? Now press L1 to fire. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So real, okay, real quick, uh, James, hold oh. L2 again, like you said? Like when you were doing that pose? And, oh, no, never mind. Whoa! Okay, so do that, there you go. Oh, do that taunt thing again and hold it for me. I want to see what happens now. Bring it on. Oh, okay, so you can't hold any longer than that. Okay, never mind. Again, right. it's just a taunt. It's just a taunt, nothing more. Fair enough. All but right. yeah, um, more, you've more or less seen the, seen the game loop that uh, Taifu provides, and uh, I mean, what do you guys think? I, looks interesting. I mean, it looked good. Like it, I can see what they were basing it off of, and I definitely learned a good amount about DreamWorks' history throughout this. And I, I clearly, a lot clearly from that, I can say that it looks like a good amount of love went into this game, and I I, I like that. Uh, 
So it's it's just a, it's just a shame that in the long grand scheme of things, it couldn't quite compete with some of the other platformers at the time, like Crash and Spyro. And I mean, not to not to not to um, shirk on you know what it does right. It's just, but in terms of its gameplay, it could use a little more spice. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe this, maybe th- between this and Oni plays his generous contribution to the gaming industry. I don't know. Maybe maybe this will bring out. Maybe this will like renew or rekindle some interest in this because for a time only, as far as our friend group went anyway, James is the only one who knew about this game. Yeah, and honestly, it's actually a funny coincidence too because um I shared some of that artwork with Tara and I was shocked to learn that she actually knew about it for the longest time and it was oh. one of those cosmic coincidences. Well, there you go. But uh, yeah, no, I, I I see this game working. Oh yeah, definitely. But um, that, yeah, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for our look at on Taifu Wrath of the Tiger for the PS One. Again, happy uh, Lunar New Year, everybody, or belated when this game when this uh, video gets uh, uploaded. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Rare. Join us next year, where for the Year of the Rabbit, we'll be tackling Usagi Yojimbo.